Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with classic green beans au gratin. That's right, when I was a kid, I thought for sure that au gratin meant with cheese, since every recipe I had that had that in the name had cheese. But eventually I learned from a chef named Steve Martin that the French word for cheese was fromage. But anyway, you're not here for a French lesson. So I'll just finish up by telling you au gratin means something that has a cheesy and or bready crust on top. And this classic example using fresh green beans is one of my favorites. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by prepping our beans, which as you may know, have two ends. Okay, we have this pointy fun end, which we're gonna leave alone. But this other end that attaches to the plant, that we wanna trim off, which we can do by just snapping it off with our fingers, which will totally work. But if you have a whole bunch to do, Trimming them off with a knife is going to be a lot faster. And to do that, we'll take five or six and line them up with all those stem ends lined up in the same direction. Whoops, that one was already trimmed somehow. But anyway, what we'll do is line up five or six just like that. And then give them a little tap with a knife so the tops are nice and even. And then we'll simply just trim off that top eighth inch or so. And that's it. And you might think that even doing more at once would save time, but it really doesn't. Because if you grab a whole handful, it's going to take you a long time to line them all up. So I think grabbing like five or six at a time is ideal. And then what we'll do once those are topped is go ahead and cut them in half, which is definitely an optional step, but I do recommend it since I'm not a big fan of eating pieces of vegetable almost as long as my fork. Okay, I find that awkward and disconcerting. So I am gonna take the extra minute and have these. And of course you can decide for yourself. I mean, you are after all the Mr. Green jeans of your green beans, but I do think having these in a little smaller size pieces makes them more user friendly. And that's it. Once those are prepped, they're ready to cook in some boiling water. But not just any boiling water. Some very, very generously salted boiling water. All right, this is one of the huge keys to making delicious vegetables. The water has to be salty. And then what we'll do once that comes up to a rolling boil over high heat is go ahead and transfer in our beans. And then give them a nice stir with the strainer we're going to use to remove them with. Which, in case you're wondering, in the business we call a spider. And it's a tool every cook must have. And what we're going to do here is cook these for about five or six minutes, or until they are just tender. And by the way, forget I just said five or six minutes. Do not go by time. All right, when you think you're getting close, go ahead and fish one out, and then bite in to see how you're doing. And like I said, we want this just barely tender. All right, not crisp, not tender crisp, not soft, just barely tender. And then once we've determined that's where they're at, we'll go ahead and fish those out into a big bowl of cold water, which of course all the cookbooks say should be ice water. But that is not necessary. As long as you have a decent amount of cold tap water, that is going to stop the cooking process, which is all we need to have happen. So save those ice cubes for your cocktails. And then what we'll do as soon as those have been shocked in cold water, as we call it, and they're basically cool to the touch, we'll go ahead and transfer those into a very generously buttered casserole dish or pan. And it's totally okay, if not advantageous, if there's a little bit of water attached to those beans. All right, I'm draining them pretty good, but they are still a little bit wet. And then what we'll do next is season this up with some freshly ground black pepper, a very generous pinch or two of kosher salt, and then a little touch of Dijon mustard, like maybe a teaspoon or possibly a teaspoon and a half. And then we'll go ahead and give that a nice mix until everything's well coated. And even though it's not that much and people might not even taste it, that mustard's going to add a little bit of sharpness to help cut through all the richness. So even if you're not a big mustard person, we're going to need you to put that in anyway. And then what we'll do once all that's been thoughtfully tossed together and everything's in a nice even layer is we'll go ahead and pour in our heavy cream. Or if you're fancy, you can also use creme fraiche in this, which as always would be magnificent. And then once our beans have been creamed, it's time to scatter over our grated cheese, but not too much. I'm only using two ounces of grated Comte for this, which is one of Michelle and I's favorite cheeses of all time. But a Gruyere would also be very traditional and amazing. Or if you want a white cheddar, I think always works beautifully for a gratin. And then I'm going to finish up with a little bit of freshly grated Parmesan. And please, for heaven's sake, use the real stuff. Parmigiano Reggiano. And how do you know for sure you're getting the real stuff? Well, that's easy. It's actually stamped right on the rind. And then once we've applied a light dusting of that, we're going to finish this off with some buttered breadcrumbs, which is made exactly like it's spelled. Okay, all we have to do is add some melted butter to some dry breadcrumbs. And then we'll give it a stir until it's well combined. And if everything goes according to plan, and you used enough butter, once mixed it should look like wet sand, which this does. And that means it's ready to spoon and sprinkle over our cheese. 
And I said spoon and sprinkle, not spoon and press. Okay, I don't know how much of a difference it makes, but I don't want to press my crumbs and cheese into the beans and cream. So we'll go ahead and use a light touch. And that's it. Once that's been crumbled, go ahead and finish up with a few shakes of cayenne. At which point it's ready to transfer into the center of a 450 degree oven for about 15 or 20 minutes or until it's beautifully browned and bubbling and looks like this. Oh yeah, that is a nice looking gratin. Or as my French friends would say, gratin, or something like that. And that's it. All we need to do is let this cool down for about 10 minutes before we serve it. Otherwise it's going to taste like burning. So I let mine cool down a little bit before I went in for a taste. And since I have no other food to serve this next to, I'm going to eat it right out of the pan like a savage. And as you see that cheese falling to the table, you're realizing I meant literally eat like a savage. But anyway, bad table manners aside, this really was incredible. I mean, yes, it's rich. Yes, it's decadent. But the beans are still the star of the show. And our cheese sauce is enhancing, but not covering up the flavor. Okay, one of my complaints about your average American green bean casserole, especially the ones you see around the holidays, is that there's so much going on with the condensed soup and the ton of cheese and way too many breadcrumbs or french fried onions, which I'm not saying isn't delicious. I'm just saying with some of those recipes, you're not even sure you're eating beans. But anyway, right here I decided to go ahead and spoon some up after all, so I could show you how nice it looks on a plate. And as I spoon this up, you're going to get a great look at that sauce, which I think is just the perfect thickness. All right, not too dense and stodgy, but also not thin and runny. All right, we're right in that sweet spot in between. And yes, I sure would look good sitting next to your holiday ham or turkey. And I know your family's been making that same green bean casserole for decades. And there's probably no way they're going to let you make this instead. But if they did, and you do, I think they will absolutely love this. And you might start a new holiday family tradition. And you can actually save that can of condensed mushroom soup to make soup with. Although I wouldn't really recommend that either. But anyway, the point is this is a very easy and amazing side dish. And whether you end up serving it for a fancy holiday meal or not, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.